At first, I didn't get it. The hype of Lego. For me, Lego was just something with an expensive price tag. Something I would just walk past in the kids section in stores. But that all changed when I had a conversation with my uncle-in-law. He showed me a world of plastic bricks and mindfulness. He told me how Lego has helped him and others in their everyday life. Because of Lego, I have met some amazing people who have taught me a lot about what Lego can do for people and its community. Lego was the, the time that Dad and I, when he wasn't working, was the time for Dad and I to connect. Like He was a train driver, so he would help me build trains. And Lego for me is, is a connection to my childhood and connection to my dad who passed away when I was 19. Around the time my dad died, I, about the time I stopped playing Lego, because um, I was too old for Lego, I was told. And, um, you know, it was not for grown-ups. It wasn't until I got back into my 30s that I actually got back into Lego. I went into a store and they had a, um, it was a helicopter with dinosaurs. It just reminded me how much, how much Lego meant to me. And so for the last 15 years I've been collecting Lego and building in my spare time because it's, it's incredibly mindful. I mean, that's the point of Lego, right? I got into Lego because my husband's big time into it. So my husband, he collects lots of Technic, as you can see up there behind you there. And I pretty much collect and build, I like the modular buildings and the Christmas Lego. So when I first played with Lego for the first time, I went and purchased probably about five or 6,000 little bricks and they were meant to be for the children for a play box. But instead, I decided to build a scale model of our house. It was at that moment that I was like, wow, I can actually be successfully creative. And that's what really inspired this whole journey of Lego. It, it, differ, it differs from other hobbies in the way like I used to build a lot of models and do a lot of radio control cars and boats when I was younger. And it's good because like with, with when you're painting something or gluing something, you've got to get it right first time. Whereas Lego, you don't. And if you get it wrong, you can go back and redo it quite easily. It was amazing how many times I'd paint something and then a fingerprint would end up in it and no one ever touched it. Whereas you don't have that problem with Lego. You don't have people, you know, if they touch it, they break it. It's just what we call factory reset. After I'd met a number of people in the Lego community, I discovered that they all have something in common. They want to share their love for Lego and to help people in the Lego community. Rachel and Jono even took it as far as making their own businesses to share how Lego can help people's mental health. I started House of Bricks in 2014, which was about two years after I'd started playing with Lego myself. House of Bricks is a company that I formed based on the idea of inspiring creativity um, through generations and supporting children and adults and encouraging them to be creative in everything they do. So putting that creative spin on learning and also putting that creative, that active creativity back into the workplace to get people thinking through their hands and thinking that way uh, with the Lego. Lego has taught me that the world is malleable. Just like a Lego build, you can pull it apart and you can rebuild it as something new. And I found that if I apply that kind of logic to my life, then I can recreate my world the way that I want. I had this idea that I could use Lego as a language to help people communicate with each other better. In, a, in, a, in the times that we have at the moment where communication seems impossible, I thought everybody can everybody can communicate in Lego and you know maybe we could sit around a table and build some Lego and solve some of these problems we've got. And so Grab Life by the Bricks kind of came about as, as me wanting a chance to express my passion and my joy and, and, and the feelings and wellness that I got from from Lego with other people so that they could find that their worlds could be malleable and they could deconstruct their lives and reconstruct them in a positive way and create better outcomes for themselves. And it doesn't have to be Lego. Lego is just a tool to help me teach the ideas of, of reconstruction and, and that it is possible. At the Christchurch Brick Show, I was lucky enough to meet a number of people who were open to talking about their mental health and Lego. I found that 96% of people use Lego to help with their mental health. It, it gives me something to, to unwind, to decompress with at the end of the day. So sitting down with a Lego set, whether I'm free building or just doing my own thing or building, following along instructions, it, it, you know, you can adjust it to your mood. If you don't really feel like thinking, you can just follow instructions. If you really need to activate your brain and your hands, you can just free build, do what you want. 
and now my son's come along he likes to sit there and um and when i say help he, he moves pieces and, and stuff but you know it, it's going to be fun bonding with him too so that's going to be good for the mental health it's it's yeah it's just something to unwind with keep my hands busy keep my mind busy or as i said if you want to shut off your mind just follow instructions and, and build lego has quite positively impacted my life so before playing with Lego, I was never put out there to talk with people and interact in large group situations. And previously to that, me talking to even three or four people was really daunting. So it's provided this channel for me to become more confident within myself and within my abilities to talk to people and interact and positively impact other people through that. It's all about addressing it before it becomes really, really bad. We have used Lego Bricks as that channel to maintain good mental health within our family life and within ourselves individually. I might have had a really, really busy day. I know that I can just come home, sit down with the Lego and just block out the world for a moment and just be with myself and enjoy that creativity, which will then boost the spirits, which is just what we need sometimes. It's, it's become more than a toy, it's now a tool for mental health, for, for psychiatrists, for therapists, for um, counsellors. You know, you sit down and build it and just chill out and they're more likely to sit and unwind, they're more likely to open up. A very good tool for breaking down walls and for just sit and chill with, with, with someone that's having a hard time and build Lego because everyone knows how to do it. If you click two bricks together you can, you can build it. So wherever you are in your skill level you, you can build and get to where you want to go with help from people or just playing and figuring it out yourself if that's what you enjoy. I believe Lego came to me at the best possible time in my life from suffering through depression, anxiety, grief, and loss, Lego has been an amazing tool to help me take a break and has helped to show me how important mindfulness can be. After hearing about how much it has helped people in this community, I wanted to give it a try myself. That is where I got the idea to start the 100 day project, a project where I fill out 13 questions about my day to day to see what has possibly influenced and changed my day, mood, mental health etc. I found that on days that I used Lego my mental health was significantly better. I found that on days that the weather was sunny my mental health was better. I found that on days that I spent more money my mental health was worse and I think doing this project helped me understand my own mental health and what affects it. And I think becoming a part of the Lego community myself has allowed me to open up to the fact that mental health should be talked about more and that Lego is a great tool to do so. The beauty of Lego is it's just, it's creationary. You know, there's, you can create something and if it doesn't work, you recreate it. And that's the, that's the lessons. Um, I watched three generations of people all sit down and talk and play and communicate over bricks and just see the joy on their faces when, you know, the grandkid comes up and look what I've done, mum. Oh, look what I've done, granddad. And just to see that, that level of joy and anticipation and participation and, you know, family. I think that's what Lego means to me is it's, it's reconnection. Like for me, it's reconnection with my family. I love playing Lego with my kids now, like the same way that dad loved Lego, playing Lego with me. And um, I kind of forgave myself for who I was. I dropped any pretense of who I thought I was. And I just was myself. So if I wanted to be a creative kind of lunatic weirdo, I was a creative lunatic weirdo. And I didn't need anybody's approval or permission or, you know, anything to just be who I wanted to be, to be myself. And then I found the more I was myself, the more it spread joy, the more people, the more my life improved and the happier the people around me were and the happier I was. Um, so, yeah, Lego helped me find myself.